Let me greet the saints of the Almighty God in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a privilege this morning to share the words of the Lord with the saints. We, unfortunately, with COVID um, taking lives, making movements very difficult, we are all homebound a little bit of his pounds. We cannot move freely as we would love to. I'm missing visiting Swaziland Conference. This would have been live presentation right there. I'm missing Namibia. 
uh, this would have been a live presentation, but movements are so much restricted. And uh, these are the signs of the last days. And we need to do whatever we do quickly and very smartly. We are almost home. Let me share the, 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 the passage that is in my heart. The title of my sermon is entitled, Where are your priorities? Where are your priorities? And the key passage is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, uh, verse 33. And I'm sure most of us know this by heart, where Jesus says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Friends, Christ says, as he views all that is entail, entails in, 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 in life, he says the most important thing, priority number one, is to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness then Christ says, once we have obtained this first, then any other thing that our heart desires will then be added. Listen to what the inspired pen says in the book, Mount of Blessings, page 99. We are to engage in no business, follow no pursuit, seek no pleasure that will hinder the outwork outworking of his righteousness in our character and life. Whatever we do is to be done heartily as unto the Lord. Again, the inspired pen adds some sweetness on this passage. That friends, in everything that we do, one thing that should not shift positions is the kingdom of God. And the passage that indeed illustrates uh, 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 uh. This point very much to me is the one that is found to first in First Samuel chapter four. Where are your priorities? Chapter four, First Samuel. It says, "Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer." And the Philistines encamped in Apec. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle, array against Israel. And when they joined battles, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. Verse 3, and, and, and when the people had come into camp, the elders of of Israel said, why has the Lord defeated us um, to, today before the Philistine? Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes it among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from there the ark of the covenant. It's a long story. It's a long story. Now, the Israelites were camping on one side. The Philistines, their worst enemies, were camping on the other side. Friends, when the two took on each other, Israelites were defeated. 4,000 men died on the battlefield. And they began to wonder, why has the Lord forsook us? As, as they were looking for the solution, what came in their minds was, no, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant. They say all that they needed was the Ark of the Covenant. They believe that the presence of the Ark of the Covenant will give them victory. Listen, yes, the Ark represented God, but they are not saying let's bring God. They are saying let's bring the Ark. It's like the ark has a magic in itself. Instead of seeking the Lord, they were seeking. Listen, they are in trouble. Instead of solving the problem with the right solution, 
They went for a problem to solve a problem. All they needed more than the ark was the presence of the Lord. So Hophni and Phineas were tasked to go bring the covenant. When the ark of the covenant landed on the battlefield, my Bible says when it landed, the whole earth shook. There was so much earth shaking to a, to a point that even the Philistines far away, the, the, the shaking of the volcanic eruption also affected them. And they had a big noise and they, won, they wondered what has happened. And Israelites were celebrating like the arrival of the, of the ark was the arrival of God. Friends, this was a disaster. Listen, my Bible says, the, the Philistines were scared. They, were, they feared for their lives. Listen, and they say, Israelites have a powerful God. It means the sound of the celebration, it means their God has arrived. We are in trouble. Listen, instead of running away from, from the Israelites, they, the Philistines, they began to prepare themselves to tie all the loose ends. They, 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 they began to reinforce all angles, all corners. Instead of running away, they were, they were, like, they were like more determined, they were more encouraged by their arrival. Instead of running away, you know friends, the one thing that made them go forward is that the presence, yes, the ark was there, but the, 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 the person the ark represented was not there. Friends, there are times when we have done everything we can to make sure that the presence of God is secured. It, friends, it, it, at times when we have done everything that we could steal, the presence of God may remain absent. At times we don't know. We fail to differentiate between the presence and the absence. Blessed are those who can see, who can tell whether the Lord is here or the Lord is. Some of us know no difference. We see the Lord even where the Lord is not there. When we have missed the point, we run for solutions that are not a solution but a problem. Blessed is the man who has God on his side. Let, 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 let's run forward. Let's run forward. The earth is shaken. Now, with the presence now, friends, of the covenant, the ark of the... Israel was now more confident that definitely they are going to make it. Listen, friends. The first defeat was better than the second defeat. With the ark being present, my Bible records that the 30,000 men died and Israel fled. One man, one man managed to flee and he ran to report the whole incident, the whole progress to the prophet. But here is what touches my heart, my friends. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dead on his head. Now, when he came, there was Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the men came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, what does the sound of this Talmud mean? And the men came quickly and told Eli, verse 15, and Eli was 98 years old. His eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then the men said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle. 
line. And he said, what happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Hophni and Phineas, are dead, and the ark of God has been captured. Before we go any further, listen to this. When the messenger arrived at the house of the, the prophet, the prophet Eli was found sitting, facing the direction where the battle was. His heart, his mind was not whether Israel wins or fails, but his heart was on the covenant, the ark of the covenant, God's property, which was right there in the forefront of the battle. Listen, Eli was not concerned about any other thing. He was concerned about one thing, the things of God. Oh, friends, the question was not did Israel win? Did this happen? But the, the question in the mind of Eli was, is, is God's property, is God's thing, which is among us, is it safe? My brother, my sister, where are your priorities? Eli's priority was on the things of God, on God's business. Unfortunately, dear friends, most of our members are worried about many things that never worry God. But the main thing that worry God is less focused among our God. But here is an old man who was 98 years. His consent, his priorities were on the things of God. Listen, when the report was given, when the report that, hey, Israel has fled, 30,000 men have fallen. Hmm? Eli survived all those bad news, including the report that says, your two sons did not make it, they are dead. He survived. But my, my Bible says, verse 18, then it happened when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck was broken and he died for the man was old and heavy and he, he had charged Israel for years. Listen, Israel have fled. Israel defeated. 30,000 dead. His own two sons, his offsprings dead, but he survived. My Bible verse 18 says, but when the reporter the messenger mentioned that God's property, God's belonging, God's things was, had also been captured by their worst enemy. He could not take it. Friends, how many of us who worry about God's business? How many of us who have made God's business to be the main business of the day? That your business is there to support the main business, which is God's mission. Friends, some of us, we worry more about the things that are tangible, things that are visible, things that belong to us, but then the things of God always come last. Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then every other thing shall be added. And then, and then again, the inspired pen says, I love it. Let me go with, 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 with all my heart to it again. Where, where, where the Bible says, did I say, did I say? Okay, there we are. First thing first, we are to engage in no business, follow no pursuit, seek no pleasure, that will hinder the outworking of his righteousness in our character and life. Whatever we do is to be done heartily as unto the Lord. My brother, my sister, where are your priorities? Are, are, are the things of heaven? Is God's business, is God's mission, 
receiving all the attention and divided or other things come first, not the kingdom. Then God's things, you see them later when you have seen your things first. Where are your priorities? In, 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 in Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, the first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. In other words, the first commandment is asking a question, Who is your God? Where are your priorities? Is God first or last? A young man, after his pay, he was putting together his budget. He wanted to allocate a certain amount that will go to the house of God in the form of tithe and offerings. As he was budgeting his house, his car, his cars, his, his, his furniture, the school fees, when he was done, he could not find a slot for what belongs to God. He could find a space for the luxury car he drives, for the house he's staying in, or for this for this school fees, for the grocery, for, 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 for the, for, for, for the rates, for the lights, for water, and, and every other fee. But when it came to this lump sum that he had to give to the Lord, he could not find a slot. Listen, failing to find a slot, failing, being able to slot everything in, and failing to slot God's in, it means, my brother, God does his no priority in your life. Other thing matters more than God matters in your life. Where and what are your priorities, my brother? I'm glad there's a man like this one, Ellie, whose mind was always focused on things that matters the most. Things that matters before God also mattered in his life. Your business is not there. When God blessed you with your job, he did not bless you with a job so that you can live a decent life, so that you can drive the decent car. But God gave you that job so that as God blesses you, you can also in return bless the one who blesses you. But I'm scared to say, friends, most of us, God always come last. When everything is done, then, you th then God comes. In other words, God is not first in your life. And if he is not first, he is nobody. The inspired pen again says, hmm? I just can't stop reading it. We are to engage in no business. Hmm? Follow no pursuit. Seek no pleasure. That will hinder the outworking. Can I ask you a few questions? If your conference, if your conference were, 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 were missing, were failing, to achieve the goal for baptism. When the report is given that this year, so far, we have baptized very few people. Do you worry about that? Does it concern you? Or it concerns others? When your conference is failing to meet the budget, if funds, tithes, and, and offerings are not coming in according to the proposed budget, does that affect you? Does it concern you? Or oh, it's just a day as usual. Whether the church, the, the conference is making it or not, it's none of your business. But other things, listen, if God's business is not your business, 
There are something somewhere has replaced God in your life. When you get a report that the conference is struggling, funds are not coming in, do you shift the responsibility to others? Or you take it upon yourself? Friends, when we say yes to Christ Jesus, we are not only accepting him as our savior, but we are also assuming, taking over all the responsibilities. We become responsible. It becomes our duty to make sure that God's business is flourishing. Friends, God has no one else to push his agenda but his own people. It's unfortunate that some of us, only our names are written. But our hearts, our attention is nowhere. I listened, I attended a, a, a funeral one day. Listen, they were, this guy was working for one firm and, and he, he had done perfectly. The, the, he, he made the, the company, you know, flourish, achieve whatever goals. He was the key, the key. When on his funeral, ah, the CEO, what a wonderful report. But listen, that company was proud of this man. He was known. He was active. But guess what? In the church, he was just as a bench warmer. It's amazing. In all businesses, he gave his best punch somewhere else, not where God is. Some people are well known where they work, well known in the community where they stay, but in the church, they are inactive. It's, it's, it's like, it's like I'll, I'll put my best punch anywhere else, but here I'm just a, a spectator. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just here to watch others making things happen. My brother, if, if, if you are failing to make God's priority in your business, by the way, when everything is said and done, listen, one thing, one thing, one thing remains a question. Where was your priority? While you were still alive, did you make any contribution? Did, did, did you make your presence felt in God's business? Or, or, or you were too good everywhere else except in God's house. Here, you were just a warm banker, but everywhere else, they, they could experience your best ability, your skill. But in God's business, you are just a spectator. You watch others doing things, but you don't feel that it, that is where you belong. My brother, my sister, let me make can, an appeal to you. Can we all be like Eli? When the two sons died, mm. By the way, one of the sons' wife was expecting. When this news came around, the wife rushed immediately to labor and she gave birth and named that son Ichabod. The glory has departed. Listen, 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 listen. Only when, you know, all along, Israel thought God was present. They thought God was with them. They could not feel, experience the absence, friends, until they, they were defeated in a bad way. That's when they discovered we all thought God is with us. You know, when you're far from God, you cannot even tell whether he's here or not. My brother, do you make any effort to reach out to the lost? Do you do you have time 
to reach the unreached. Do you get excited when people say yes to Jesus and they are baptized and their membership is added? Does, does, does that which excite God, which, which put Christ on the cross, does things that excite God excite you or it excites others? But listen, if it doesn't, I advise you now to go down on your knees and ask God to sharpen your consciousness and make things that matter to God to matter in your life too. Friends, when you hear that the conference is struggling financially, does it concern you? When the conference is doing well, do you get excited? If the conference is doing well financially, do you see? Do you acknowledge and get excited that so much, so many millions came in, and among those millions, there is your contribution there as well? Or the conference is doing well, and you know deep down in your heart that not even a cent, not even one faithful type has been contributed. Oh, there are those that come to church just to be a number. Nothing else but just a number. When they are, they are wallet, they are wallet, they are wallet. Let me take out mine. They are wallet belongs to them. When they have to give to God, they have to look for the smallest because they don't need it, then they give it to God. But those who have placed God as the first priority, they give him the best because he is the best. Friends, tithe, God set the percentage. He tells you what it is, how much. But when it comes to offerings, God says, you evaluate me my goodness to you, the blessings that I've showered upon you, then evaluate, measure, and give according to what I've done to you. Is your offering reflecting the goodness, the blessings of the Lord? Friends, until Christ become the center, his things will not center in our lives. Until Christ becomes our focus, Things will not, his things will remain his. Blessed are those who worry when God worries. Blessed are those who get excited about the things of God. Friends, I remember one country versus another country on the soccer ground. As, 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 as I can't remember which team, which country. You know, this guy received the ball without even turning around, facing the direction of, of, of the poles. He made a swift turn. And I inquired, why not taking time to measure, calculate, get, get, get to know where the positions of the, of, of the poles are? I was told that when the guy walked into, this, into the field, he measured. In other words, the poles were not only there, they were also in his mind. I pray that wherever you are, whatever you do, may God's position remain the center. May God become your priorities. When God wins, may you also win. If God fails, consider yourselves failing. I want to pray for you so that God may prosper you, so that you may put God where he belongs. Nothing will go right until the timing is perfect, until you put God where he belongs. It will be a struggle, friends, to return a tithe and an offering if God is not at the center of your life, if you do not love him the way he loves you. Friends, when you have taken God's property back to him, whatever remains in your wallet remains blessed. But if the thing of God remains in your wallet, it corrupts everything in the wallet. No wonder people sit down, buy 
patch it and repatch it, but whatever, the patch it never balance because there is something that does not belong there. If you belong to God, everything that is yours, you consider them as, 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 the, as coming from the Lord. So you return as an acknowledgement, appreciation that God indeed is the one that supplies all you need. I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the privilege that you have given me to share the words with the saints. Thank you, Father, for having placed the resources, your resources in our hands so that we may demonstrate our dependency upon you, so that we may acknowledge that what we have belongs to you. There's nothing, dear Lord, that we return to you which was never yours in the first place. Touch our hearts, touch everyone. May we get excited as we see the progress in God's business because we are here to do nothing else but God's business. Bless everyone as we stand to put you in the right place and to make you a priority in our lives. We pray and ask all this in one name, the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is coming soon. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.